the latest from Fox Business, giving you the power to prosper for all the day's top business stories. Log on to foxbusiness.com. The business day continues now with Brian Sullivan. Well, $1,100 for every man, woman, and child in America. The government says that could be the bill for a housing bailout. So how do we fix Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, or are they beyond fixing? AEI's Peter Wallison says it's time to let them go. He is here. More Americans letting go of their homes, simply walking away and leaving the bill to others. Is there a moral obligation to pay your mortgage? We'll discuss. And the dollar has no soul. Tim Geithner coming back from the G20 in Korea with little to show but a falling greenback. All right, welcome everybody. Hope you're having a better start to the week than the U.S. dollar is. The U.S. dollar is falling again against nearly every major currency in the world. It's at about a 10-month low against the euro. And get this, it is at a 15-year low against the Japanese yen. Freedom Watch with Judge Napolitano on Fox Business. Is there a moral obligation to pay your mortgage? More Americans are packing up and simply walking away from their homes, mailing the key right back to the bank. Joining us now is Rodney Carey. He's a founding partner of Woodward Asset Management. He recently wrote an op-ed saying, yeah, there is a moral obligation to pay. Rodney, welcome to the program. Why do you believe that there is when so many people say banks simply rip them off? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on, but there's really three primary things that you want to look at when considering this. The first is that we're ultimately going to continue to delay the housing recovery, which is going to lead to a recovery of the broader economy. The second piece that's important is the growth of the strategic defaulter, the person that can afford to make their payment but chooses not to because there's just no penalties out there today for them to not make their payment. And then lastly, there's a growing trend in America that we continue to live beyond our means. And to be real honest, we're just not doing enough to pull those things in line. You know, but listen, there's so many, I mean, people that, that I respect out there, financial professionals saying, you know what, you don't owe anything to the bank, that they would turn the screw on you just as fast as they could. And, and so if you feel like you got misled on your mortgage, there is no harm, there is no foul, there's no shame in simply not paying and walking away. What do you say to those people? Well, I think it's a very misdirected approach. If we even look at the recent announcements today from Bank of America with the mortgage moratorium that they've put in place, that with all the investigation they've done, there's less than 1% error rate on those documents. And the errors that they're seeing is not that someone was foreclosed on an error, but yet the, the problem is there may not be the proper zip code or there may be um, a first name where the last name or the last name where the first name is supposed to go. But the reality is the process was intact. What people are forgetting to look at is the whole reason that we're in this mess in the first place is that people didn't make the payments that they said that they would make. When they applied for the mortgage, they put down on their application what their income was, they put down what their credit was like, and those were the decisions that the mortgage company lent them money on. And those are the types of responsibilities that Americans just need to uphold moving forward. Yeah, much of the commentary coming out of not all the unions, but some unions basically imply that banks are social services, right? I mean, there is no obligation to, for anybody to borrow money. I mean, I know we're a lending and a credit society, right? But nobody's forced to borrow money. Correct. And, and, then why are we acting exactly like banks are a social service? Credit cards are a social service. Ah, we shouldn't be, and that's what's going to delay the housing recovery. There will. Be, it used to be that your hierarchy of credit was the credit card was the most risky type of credit out there. Higher up on that level was the auto loan, and then at the top of that level was the mortgage. The general feeling was that people would always make their housing payment. Today, our customers are seeing a reversal of that. We're seeing the mortgage be the first thing that the people walk away from, and the credit card being the thing that they're going to try and make those payments on for the longest period of time. You know, it is interesting about that, too, because there's a big concern about what they call the shadow economy and shadow stimulus, right, where people who aren't paying their mortgage now have a few thousand a month more to spend, and they are spending it, and that when that goes away, the economy could take another turn down. How big of a risk do you think that is, especially in a hard-hit state like Michigan, like yours, Rodney? 
I think it's a huge problem. Your strategic defaulters are really where the beginning of the problem is. There are certainly going to be people in the economy today that struggle and that need some help. They need some modifications done to their mortgage or maybe an interest rate adjustment or a reamortization. Mm -hmm. Where the problem is really coming in are the people that can afford to make the payment. They have the ability to. They just choose not to because they have the opportunity to maybe go down the street and yeah. buy a house that's exactly like theirs for a significantly lower price. If we don't address that type of lapse, the, the type mm -hmm. of judgment that says it's okay not to uphold your obligation, that's where we're going to run into trouble in the future. Rodney Carey, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on Fox Business. Thank you. All right. Well, the World Series is set. Texas Rangers versus San